Good morning to a very cold and foggy Roscommon. Today I am talking about hiking boots, hiking shoes, how to pick the right one for what you're going out and doing. This is part of our mini hiking 101 series um, around it being January and people setting New Year's resolutions to get out more. So as you can see here, I have a selection of boots and I'm going to talk through why you might pick one kind over the other and what I have used them for over the years. Okay, so the first pair that I'm going to talk about are these Merrill uh, Speeds. So these are a lightweight hiking boot. They are fully synthetic. They have a Gore-Tex membrane, which means they're waterproof and they are a lightweight trail boot. So if I'm putting on these, I am probably going out on an established trail. So that might mean a looped walk or a forest path or like forestry uh, access roads. Those kind of trails is what I'm heading out in these boots. So the big kind of difference between this and then as you go further up is how rigid and flexible the sole is. So it's taking a bit of force for me to flex the boot, but I am able to make the whole boot flex up. And when I twist it like this, there's a bit of flex. Now this is gonna be the big difference between a pair of boots and a pair of casual runners that you might have at home that you've been using for hiking. With a pair of um, street shoes or basic runners, you're gonna be able to twist this, the, the shoe and almost like wring it out, almost like kind of twist the whole thing around. Hiking footwear, it's gonna have certain amounts of give but in general, it's gonna be a lot more stable so that when your foot hits a rock, your whole ankle doesn't just kind of twist over. It kind of adds that extra um, stability and security that people associate with boots. You can get that stability in a shoe, certainly this level of stability in a hiking shoe as well. So you don't have to always go for a boot. I quite like boots um, because for me, mostly it's the waterproofing that's going higher. <laughs> if you're in a bit of a splash or a puddle, the higher waterproofing uh, means that the water isn't going to come up and in the top of your boot. Just because this section is waterproof doesn't mean it's <laughs> waterproof from the giant hole where your foot goes through. So yeah, as I said, these are going to be for uh, tracks and trails kind of hiking. Really, really comfy for that. I quite like these because they're quite light. Um, but the sole still feels quite kind of thick and cushioned. Um, they, they have a slightly odd sensation when I put them on. Um, it is quite a spongy, uh, thick sole, but I really liked it um, for just kind of day hikes. Our next pair of boots are a pair of Mindels, Mendels, however you prefer to pronounce them. It's a German brand, and these are um, a leather boot. So these are going to have. Ooh, I've got actually I've got this thingy in it. Stops them getting sm smelly and helps them actually dry out a bit faster. At least I have found. So that's gonna prohibit the flexing. So yeah, these again, bit of flex, less flex than before. The toe of the boot isn't coming the whole way up, but it's still got flex. And then when I try and do the twist method again, yeah, it's still some flexing to it, but a bit more rigid um, again than the previous boots. So these are my all-rounder boots. Um, they've got a leather upper, they've got a Gore-Tex lining. I use these all year round. Now, when people are looking for a waterproof boot, they nearly always go for like something like a Gore-Tex membrane because everyone talks about how breathable the membrane is. While the Gore-Tex itself is breathable, leather or whatever the rest of the boot is made out of is not gonna be super breathable. When people talk about a breathable membrane, your foot is going to be less sweaty than other options, but this does not mean that all of the moisture is going to magically disappear from your foot. Waterproof boots are warmer, are hotter than non-waterproof boots, but you do have the fantastic benefit of dry, of like relatively dry feet, depending on how sweaty you are. So these are my yeah go-to for everything. Now, I might do a bit of a close-up shot. Quite often people will look for a leather boot because of its durability. And now uh, I do take quite good care of my boots. 
um, I quite enjoy uh, waxing them or putting conditioner into them but still mine have dried out because I haven't been using these guys recently so they've just been sitting um, on the boot rack so I'll put in a couple of close-up shots when the leather dries out it starts to crack and disintegrate so when you're buying a pair of leather boots it's not going to be a case that you can wear them for a few hikes put them in the press for a year and come back and have them be perfectly fine if you're buying leather boots for the longevity you need to know that you're going to have to take care of them for their lifetime and if you do regularly uh, wax and condition your boots they are going to last for ages and ages and ages um, i've had these guys um, for at least three years admittedly um, with the way the world is i haven't got to do a huge amount of hiking and some of that but they're still good boots i've had to condition them a few times even though i haven't got to use them and they're going to keep going um, these are as heavy a boot as I personally go for if I'm doing a long distance through hike or backpacking. And I'll explain why in a little bit. So for me, uh, this level of boot is, again, you can do your tracks and trails, and you can do your bit of off trail, um, tiny sheep tracks. This is uh, more suitable for kind of open mountain, off trail, on trail mix of the two. So my final pair of boots are Scarpa Rangers. So these are some heavy duty boots. Again, take out my <laughs> um, nicely scented inside thingies. So these guys have a little bit of flex. And if I try and do that twist, we're looking at a little bit of twist as well. Now, these have more flex and more twist right now um, than they would when you buy them. These are stiff-soled boots. So in the, in the hiking range of boots, this is as stiff as I would want to go. Now, there are, there are benefits to this stiff sole. If you are going purely up the side of a mountain, don't care about finding any trails or sheep trails, you're just, you see the top and you're just plowing through whatever bog you have to do to get there, these are gonna be your friend. Um, this stiffness means that no matter how uneven the terrain is below your feet, they are going to stay stock still. There again, another leather boot. Um, these have fewer seams than the previous, they're more kind of wraparound leather, so that the fewer seams there are, the kind of more traditionally waterproof um, the boot would be. These also have their Gore-Tex layer and they have um, same as the other boots, quite a bit of like cushioning on the inside. So they are lovely boots. When you get a rigid boot, however, it's rigid to the outside world, it's also rigid to your own foot. So if it's not gonna give to the rock, it isn't gonna give when your foot is tired or if your foot is twisting the opposite way. I have tried doing long distance backpacking in these and I found them too heavy going. Both a combination of the, the hardness of the sole and if you're walking on a forestry, like a fire road for 10k, that kind of relentless pounding was bruising the soles of my feet and they just didn't have any give so there wasn't enough flex for my foot when I was doing the kind of easy repetitive walking sections. These are amazing for heading off a mountain um, but not for me for that kind of repetitive walking when I have weight on my back because the added weight of the backpack pushing me down and kind of going through my hips into my feet really really compounded <laughs> that bruising for me um, so I use these boots for day hikes where I, I, I know I'm not going to see a trail from one end of the day to the next and I am just off into the wilderness by myself Again, gonna need to have to take care of these um, with your conditioners and your waxes, um, but they are a really, really amazing heavy duty boot. The rigid sole of these boots has another benefit. So when I eventually wear away the soles from walking, I can get the soles of these boots replaced. With the other lighter weight boots, when you take off the sole, the whole boot loses its shape. However, this boot, um, to give it its rigid stiffness, it has a kind of like 
uh, plank going through it, for want of a better word. Um, so when they take off the sole, there's still that kind of board going through the boot um, to hold it all in place while they put on the new shoe sole. So these ones, hypothetically, um, I could be wearing for the next 20 years um, if I maintain the upper part really, really well and get the sole replaced when it's starting to fall apart. Having said that, if the boot is falling apart too much, it goes off the other extreme and parts of it are too damaged and you won't be able to repair the sole. So it's a balance of wearing away the sole until it's definitely worn and you need a new one, but not pushing on so far that you're damaging all the upper as well. And then the boot kind of loses its structural integrity. Whether you go for leather or synthetic is completely up to you. I find that synthetic boots tend to be lighter, which I really, really like. Um, one of my favorite pairs of boots was um, Solomon's Comets, which were a mixture of leather and synthetic. Realistically, these two boots are going to see me out for years and years, so I don't plan on buying any more leather boots anytime soon. Finally, I have my trail shoes. So they're well uh, muddy at the moment because I've been doing quite a bit of running. You can 100% go hiking in runners if you know you're going to be on um, trails or you're very sure of your own feet. I have happily gone through bogs in these out on long mountain runs and I just accept my feet are going to be absolutely soaked by the end of it and I kind of have enough experience to weather the twisting terrain and the kind of the uncomfortable aspects that might come with wearing um, trail runners when hiking. What I find is if you are wearing uh, trail runners, if you are going to get wet, so you need to make sure that you wouldn't be getting cold if you're wearing these. If you're going for a leisurely hike and you're going to be getting cold, it's a lot harder to kind of keep the body warm. Um, so having wet feet mightn't be what you actually want in that kind of a situation. Um, so I probably recommend trail runners for people who have experience using them um, or just really, really, really dislike the feeling of a boot. Yeah, so we have our light trails and kind of approachable day hikes. We have our slightly more heavy duty mixture of on and off trail, seeing you around the mountains. Maybe if you're going for uh, a lot of through hiking or backpacking and you want a sturdy boot. And then we have our um, conquer the world <laughs> boots at the end, but that also have that um, unforgivingness to them as well. In regards to how to fit boots, uh, we have a blog post giving real immense detail to it, which I will link in the description. But in general, you're going to want to be able to take the insole out of your boot, put your foot on top and have at least a thumb's space in front of your toes. Um, this gives your foot space to move a little bit without banging off of the front of the boot coming downhill or um, if your feet swell a little bit, giving them that space to kind of expand and contract and move about without damaging you or the boot. So I want some nice room in the toe box and you definitely don't want it to be pinching or tight across the kind of widest part of your foot here. You do want the midsection to kind of hold your foot nice and snug. You don't want your foot to be kind of sliding all over the place unnecessarily. So nice and snug here and well held at the heel. If you have a chance before you go out hiking in a pair of boots, I definitely recommend trying them out on a ramp repeatedly to make sure that your toes aren't banging off the front and going uphill to make sure that your heel isn't kind of popping out of the back or sliding up and down in the back and rubbing. There's nothing, nothing worse than blistered toes or heels or arches any part of your foot you want to keep them as pampered as possible. I tend to go for the lighter end personally for uh, through hiking or long distance hiking. I find that the lighter weight is easier on my feet and I also am going to be wearing through the soles quite quickly and seeing as I'm not wearing the level of shoe that can be resold um, for long distance hiking I prefer to go for the lighter shoe or lighter boot they say you should get about 500 kilometers out of a pair of shoes or boots. Some of my boots have definitely done more and some of my shoes have definitely been at death's door when they hit the 500 kilometer mark. 
So it's all about kind of finding what works for you and what kind of distance you're going to be doing. Finally, do not pick brand over fit. Every single uh, footwear item here is a different brand. They're all brands that I really like for different reasons and for different styles of footwear. For me, with Solomon, I really like their boots. Their boots fit me really well, but their runners are too narrow. So every brand is going to have different fits for different models. So just because somebody tells you that Scarpa are the best boots out there, and you try to put your foot in and it's either way too wide or way too skinny and doesn't fit, you should not get those boots. Get ones that fit your feet. Brand names are great, but don't go off something just because one specific brand was recommended to you. So yeah, I hope you found that helpful and interesting. Um, bigger and heavier is not always better, but it is definitely necessary in some occasions. So it's really about finding what's going to work for you, what's really comfortable on your foot, and is going to see you through your hikes. At the end of all of our videos, we like to say a huge thank you to our patrons. They're the ones who make these possible and keep us hiking and help us buy more hiking boots than we wear through the soles. <laughs> this week I'd like to say a huge thank you to Jen Carey, to Patrick and to Colin Mushker. I will see you all in our next video and until then, happy hiking! <sighs> Definitely filming this time. Okay, so I was just filming the close-up shots of the different pairs of boots and I realised I didn't talk about where the Gore-Tex or waterproof membrane lining is. So I want you to imagine that a sock is made in the shape of your boot out of this waterproof membrane and that's literally stitched onto the inside of your boot. So if you see that grey lining there, that's the waterproof membrane. So what's really, really important about getting the right fish for a pair of boots not only does it like stop your own feet from being damaged, but it stops things like that waterproof membrane from being damaged. Because if your foot is banging off the front of the boot again and again and again, it's going to cut through that waterproof membrane. So be it big heavy boots like this or the lighter weight ones, the Gore-Tex or waterproof membrane, this like sock that's stitched onto the inside of your boot, it's going to be only one or two uh, layers deep. And the number of times I've stuck my hand into the toe box of a pair of boots and felt around and you can feel where the toes have cut through that Gore-Tex lining or waterproof membrane and the boots are no longer waterproof because there's now holes for it to come straight through. So it protects your own feet and protects the boots to make sure that whatever pair you get they fit you really well. So keep our feet dry. Okay, that's it.